Good afternoon everyone, it's David Schlothauer here with another detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for Wednesday, June the 12th. 2024. So to start things off, here's a look at the latest seven-day graphical tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center in Miami, Florida, and we have two areas to watch now. Two days ago, we had no areas to watch, so the tropics are really beginning to wake up in a hurry here as we approach middle of June. So the first area that we're watching still is an area of interest. This is Invest 90L or Atlantic area, so that's what the A stands for, an elongated area of low pressure over the Florida Peninsula continues to produce a large area of disorganized showers and thunderstorms. Although upper level winds are expected to be only marginally conducive, some slow development is possible while the system moves generally northeastward offshore of the United States southeast coast tonight through late week. Regardless of tropical development, heavy rainfall is forecasted to continue across parts of Florida Peninsula during the next few days. And for more information, you can check out the National Weather Service or your local official and the Weather Prediction Center. And we also have another area to watch. This is a slightly higher chance, almost on the cusp of a 40%. So a code orange almost on this system. This has a 30% chance in the next seven days of becoming a tropical storm or a depression. And there are some indications this could actually become a fairly significant system in the southern portion of the Gulf of Mexico. More on that in a little bit. So while we have a lot of activity going on in the Atlantic right now as far as the tropics, two areas to watch, we only have one area to watch right now in the eastern Pacific where we have a 20% chance of tropical formation in the next seven days. So definitely the tropics really waking up in a hurry. And this is what we expect during a hyperactive Atlantic hurricane season that is forecasted by all ages agencies now for the months of August, September, October, November, and even perhaps into early December. But in the meantime, here's a look at the latest GOES-16 True Color Visible Satellite Imagery provided by Dr. Levi Cowan at tropicaltidbits.com. Link is in the description below this video leading to that website. And we have, again, two areas to watch. We have Invest 90L. That's what you see here with that 10% in the short term and in the weekly output, a 20% chance. That's code yellow. These two areas are code yellow right now. And with that area to watch, especially, that is a better chance of becoming a tropical storm or a depression in the next seven days would be that one in the southern portion of the Gulf of Mexico over the Bay of Campeche near the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. That really has bear watching. But in the meantime, we don't have a whole lot going on in the Atlantic other than the Saharan dust, that dry, warm, stable layer overlapping moist, unstable layer, which would be otherwise at the surface. And that's these cloud contours that we have, these nimbostratus that we call them. We have another good-sized tropical wave coming off of Africa right now that will probably have to be watched in the next couple of weeks as this all transverses over in this general direction. Not Nothing in the short term with this wave, but with this monsoon gyre that really is getting going down here, a lot of this activity coming off of Africa will eventually move into that monsoon gyre and things usually become fairly favorable for tropical development. So now when we take a look at the European ensemble forecast, all 51 members put together to make it an ensemble. Definitely, those chances are very elevated, especially, again, over to the southern portion of the Gulf of Mexico here. You can see this little yellow color. That's a 50% chance for a tropical storm with winds greater than 34 knots to exist somewhere in this area. This is in the next 0 to 8 days. So within the next week, we're looking at a 50% chance potentially for a tropical storm or depression to form in this portion of the Gulf. Now, our other area that we're really watching too, Invest 90L, from the European model, this has a 50 to 70% chance of tropical formation. There's even a little area there that has an 80% chance, but likely this will become more extratropical and subtropical and really not get named from the National Hurricane Center. But hey, 
It doesn't surprise me if it does get named, which would be our two named storms would be Alberto and something else after that. Again, it goes to show you within a week time frame, things change pretty quickly in the tropics. Now, putting this into motion on the European model, this is for this afternoon. And again, this is a look at the 850 millibar layer cyclonic relative vorticity at 5,000 feet. And again, the areas that we look for are these green and orange colors. That represents stronger spin in the atmosphere. All right, and your wind barbs here are with the arrows. So our winds are doing this in the deep tropics right now, then they get funneled up. And this is how we get our monsoon gyre really setting up here over Central America-ish near the, uh, basically in Mexico and other, and say Belize, as well as Honduras, those areas. So going forward in time, we can see how this all evolves. Again, there is Invest 90L right there. Very interesting with what the NHC will do with this. In the next couple of days, if this is going to earn a name or not, it would be very interesting. If it does, it would be Alberto on our list of names. And then again, we have our next area down here over the Bay of Campeche. Uh, the Central American Gyre really going to get active. And this is why we are watching the tropics very closely. All right, let's go out to about four days. And as we can see here, Again, there's our system still existing. And then watch what happens down here on the European model. Let's go forward in time. We can see how that really bundles up and wraps up. This would be for next week on Tuesday and Wednesday. There's your Central American gyre really trying to wrap and bundle up that energy. It's not very strong by any means on the European model, but the Canadian model and the GFS model Going a little bit crazy on how strong this is going to actually get. So there is some agreement on the global computer model field that there is going to be something down here in the deep tropics uh, in the southern portion of the Gulf of Mexico that is bear watching for a tropical depression or storm to get earned. And then we might have something else coming off of Africa too, uh, more of a more defined tropical wave too. So again, tropics really waking up, and this is what we typically expect during the second half of June. We've seen this coming, and here it is in front of us. So now looking at the GFS model, this is the American model. Same look at the atmosphere, um, but this time we're actually going to zoom in because we're really going to have to keep an eye on this area right in here. Okay, the GFS model, let's um, put this into motion. Actually, let me make my... This is for Wednesday afternoon. You can see 5,000 foot level of vorticity. Not really bundling up down there in the deep tropics yet. But guess what comes? Look at this. What? Look what the GFS wants to do. This is a very strong, well-defined monsoon gyre here. The Central American gyre, we call it. Wow. A lot of vorticity over here near uh, the Tawanapec area. Wow significant amounts of spin at that level we might even get a tropical depression that'd be very interesting and then look at this another area coming off of say venezuela you know what the gfs likes to do right it will take any sort of spin in this environment and try to amplify it so that's probably not going to end up happening and then going forward in time we can see with what all eventually happens. The GFS not too crazy about that a Central American gyre, but another piece of energy tries to get spinning on the GFS. And then beyond that, we'll see. Now there is some agreement on this run. And when we take a look at the prior runs, so if we go to previous run here, we could actually see that there has been something here existing in the global uh, in the GFS model field for now one, two, three, four, and now this is the fifth run. We'll have to watch this for June 22nd and the 23rd if the ensembles and the deterministic models continue to indicate this from the GFS that this might actually be something to also watch would be our third area other than the Central American Gyre. Another model to stare at is the Canadian model. This is the GEM model. And as we go forward in time, 
uh, it, again, we can see that area of interest, the NHC indicating that highlighted area uh, over central and southern and western um, portion there of the Gulf of Mexico. But then that, that moves into Louisiana. But look what we have also. Two other areas of spin in the atmosphere. Again, the Canadian can do some can do good in other times, and it can do bad in other times. So we will see which model actually lives up to its hype. Is the Canadian onto something? Is the European onto something? Or is the GFS onto something, right? But we can see that the Canadian really bundled that up, and this could be a huge rainmaker. In fact, if we look at the amount of rainfall expected here, wow, that could be a lot of rainfall for the western portion there of the Gulf of Mexico on the coast of central Mexico. Wow, that's a lot of moisture. And then going forward, the Canadian wants to do something else eventually down here with another area of spin. Who knows? what the Canadian is up to, but all I need to tell you is there is some impetus that um, that the Gulf of Mexico really needs to be watched over the next week. And here is why. So this is a look at the latest European model forecast. This is the ensemble mean uh, at looking at the velocity potential. Is there any upward motion, sinking motion in the atmosphere? Right now at the present moment, we are seeing a lot of sinking or rising motion, we should say, in the Caribbean and in the Gulf of Mexico. Hence is why Florida is getting a lot of rain. So if you look at this area, I know this is a little harder to see than other maps that we have that I typically show. But you can see this box that I drew up. If you kind of look at the bottom of your screen and kind of look at that region, the Mercator projection, we can see that covers pretty much the entire Atlantic as well as the Caribbean and in the Gulf of Mexico. And this upward motion usually means enhanced thunderstorms, more convergence at the surface, where we get tropical waves that could really develop quickly into tropical cyclones. And that is why we are seeing all this activity right now really developing. Now that we talked about the tropics, it's a good idea that we really focus on sea surface temperatures because where we're seeing the areas to watch right now, especially the southern Gulf of Mexico. Wow! Sea surface temperatures here are very, very warm. We are in the upper 80s. In some areas, we're even approaching almost 90 degree Fahrenheit waters down here. Yikes! That is really, really warm. And again, under a potentially favorable environment down here, Something could really spin up very quickly. I don't say this to cause fear, hype, or scare, but it's true. We have a we have some upper ocean heat content down here, along to go with a lot of moisture piled up, and the sea surface temperatures really allowing that. Entirely, the Gulf of Mexico right now is well above average with sea surface temperatures, and literally some areas in a wide swath, not just off the coast of Florida and Louisiana, are running greater than 30 degrees Celsius, which is about 86, 87 degrees Fahrenheit. It's very concerning on a meteorological scale. So we really, this is really bear watching when it comes to these sea surface temperatures. When we take a look at sea surface temperature anomalies, they are definitely far above average, especially in the northern, northeastern, eastern, and even for portions of the southern Gulf of Mexico. We can see these anomalies right here, anywhere between two to almost three. Actually, there are some islands of three degrees Celsius above average with sea surface temperatures. For the time of the year that we're in, we're also looking at well above average sea surface temperatures down here in the Bay of Campeche. So again, if we get anything that develops and it is able to bundle that energy up really quickly, look out, Mexicans. This could be a very intense tropical storm or a tropical depression bringing a lot of rainfall to many neighborhoods. Upper ocean heat content is also pretty significant as well in the main development region in the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. We can see a lot of orange colors here, a indication that we have a lot of upper ocean heat content. And speaking of that, upper ocean heat content is nearly three months ahead of schedule 
We usually don't see these numbers until usually early September. And look at this. We're in June the 12th. It's not summer right now. It's still technically spring until the 20th of June. And yet, we are seeing upper ocean heat content that rivals September. And it's, man, I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you, folks. When the season gets kicking, it's going to kick very hard. When we look at our uh, global sea surface temperatures on a wider scale across the Atlantic, definitely in the mid to upper 80s, so definitely not a problem there for any uh, issues to get major hurricanes going. And look at the temperature anomalies, especially in the northern portion of the Atlantic, kind of the central-ish Atlantic, depending on how you look at it. But down here in the deep tropics, whoa, we are two to three. And yes, there is some areas here that are running almost four degrees Celsius above average. Yikes. I mean, even a couple of my friends will even make a comment on this and be like, wow, that's very substantial. Well above average, three degrees Celsius plus in the Gulf of Mexico. So all I'm saying is, the tropics are ready to go. It's only a matter of time when the atmosphere responds to these sea surface temperatures. We get upward motion. We get lots of moisture, very little wind shear. We get a tropical wave, folks. It is going to fly hard, and it's going to kick butt if it makes landfall anywhere in the United States mainland, including the deep tropics there of Hispaniola, the Dominican Republic, Jamaica, as well as the Leeward Windward Islands, including the Bahamas, Mexico, Belize, Honduras, Venezuela, you name it. Be prepared. Don't be scared. But anyways, if you did enjoy today's detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion, this is the 15th episode, by the way. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Hit that red subscribe button right now to get latest notifications and updates on this YouTube channel when I do have these tropical weather outlooks out. Hit the like button and share this video with their family and friends on social media. And lastly, be sure you leave a comment in the section below this video. Let me know what you think of these tropical weather outlooks that I do create on an everyday basis. But otherwise, Please be safe, folks, and please be prepared. Don't be scared, and please uh, consult the National Hurricane Center, your local weather officials, for more information on the tropics. But until then, I will guys see you guys back here tomorrow with another detailed update on the tropics.